Hello everyone, Hiromi here, and 7.2 is out, and boy oh boy, I have a story with so much bugs. Like, it was so predictable that every update Wargaming launches, there will be bugs. Mostly minor, but not this one. We got not one, not two, but three major bugs. First being, Pan American Cruisers lost their combat instructions, which makes them completely dog water. However, this is fixed, so props to Wargaming to resolve that within a day, but not these two other bugs. The second major bug is where destroyers with torpedo reload skill, if they launch all their sets of torpedoes, then activate their torpedo reload skill, and then launch that set, that reloaded torpedoes just does not register. So far, I only heard from Lucian, and that's pretty much it. I haven't investigated with other ships, but I'm assuming they all fix anyways. It's just Lucian because they buff that ship. And to finally to really add the coffin to most players, your game crashes and you return back to port after sunk. This game really becomes an isekai where you die in game, you die in real life, but instead of you, it's the game. So the only way we get to fix this is to restart the app and then you can play it again. Now this doesn't mean you should uninstall the game and approach it like how Sunny did to Helldivers 2. The community in Bliss is just a mixed bag between naval historians, retired veterans, reserve marines or navy personnel, weebs, or League of Legends tryhards trying to get over 70k average damage overall. Then you got some casual which basically covers the majority of this player base. They are currently resolving this so hopefully by the guys you see this video is probably fixed. It might or not, real soon. Now before I continue my rambling on all the bugs that practically destroying this game, we got the Lord and Savior rework aircraft carrier spotting mechanics, which saved this game for now. This change makes aircraft carriers do more brain power and practice their quick reaction tests like those toys that you had to fit those pieces of puzzles within a time limit. Yeah, those anxiety inducing ones that always shit your pants when it pops. Well I don't know about today's generation with TikTok and Skibby Lee torts. I must be a boomer. But anyways, there is two spotting detection in the game, circle and sector detection. The circle detection is what we know since the game was born and was owned by a different company. This is your bread and butter that makes you start shooting once you see a floating boat from a distance. So you can punch them with your AP or just burn them alive with your HE. Very simple and easy. Now with this new detection, the sector is what you see in front of you watching this video. You can look left and right with your face, but you have to turn your whole body to look behind unless you're an owl then. I don't know how you're watching this and understand what I'm saying. Anyways, the sector is what you see far while the circle is like your instinct, and it's not like your spider instinct for Marvel. The planes getting both circle and sector detection is dive bombers and torpedo bombers, while fighters just get circle detection. In terms of detection, before 7.2, the original detection range is 4.5 kilometers and now it's 3 kilometers. There you have it. All the surface ships is happy because AA is activated before they even have a chance to get detected. But wait, it gets even better. The 3 kilometers is for tier 10 fighters for their circle detection, while the bombers and torpedo bombers are there for their sectors. Okay, so what about their circle detection? Well, it's half, 1.5 kilometers. You had to literally teabag an enemy ship to spot them, and once you spot them, those caliber guns will be going burr if it happens to be an Austin or any American cruisers. So now they had to rely sectors to spot them. Woo! Now what about the four phases that mentioned on the patch notes? Well, it's so simple that even a six-year-old can understand this. Takeoff phase is where planes go away from the runway. Simple as is. No detection has ever happened there because you really don't need to spot something three kilometers away. Your ships detect them anyways. Then we got the flight phase. This is where the sectors turn on and the circle you can visibly see them because we just can't visibly see 1.5 kilometers. The sectors is only going to be on the flight phase while the circle is going to be on of all four phases. And this applies to fighters. The third phase is attack phase. It's simple, you attack ship. Do I have to even ask any more of that? And finally the fourth phase, you just return to rearm your planes and if your planes does not return, well, it's going to rearm itself anyways and then the cycle repeats. 
Now, what about the dive bombers with their auto lock on? Well, that's the puncture factor right there. Even with all the rework and shenanigans that makes detecting ships so difficult to spot, dive bombers can just go there and spot them anyways without any extra steps. Just use your fighters to spot them and let the dive bombers to do the work. It will automatically lock on even if the enemy ship is under smoke or running away from the planes, it's still locked on. At that point, you really don't need to use fighters if you're just going to use a dive bomber set by set instead of just launching the whole squadron into them. And that's why players hate that so much. And this is where I'm going to suggest feedback to Wargaming if they ever watch this video. They need to reset the lock on if the ship is on consumer. So we can escape the madness that all carriers do is just focus one ship until it's down. Like how all the secondary guns work. If the enemy ship is in range of the auto secondaries, it auto locks on and fires. And then once the enemy ship is in smoke or under consumer, the auto secondaries stop locking on. Just do the same mechanic to dive bombers. Lock on disappears once under consumer so we can have a chance to actually enjoy the game and not rage quit because carriers still remain master of point and click once those dive bombers is locked on. Now I know it would be a lot of spaghetti code but it would be very beneficial for surface ships. Anyways, we only talk about the tier 10 sector in circle detection range. What about the lower tiers? Well, they make it easy for you because their spotting range is decreased. From tier 8 and tier 9, the sectors of the torpedo bombers and dive bombers and the fighter circle range is 2.70. As for the dive bomber and torpedo bomber circle range, it remains 1.5 kilometers. Now, down at tier 6 and 7, where most of the action is going to happen. Sector and fighter circle range now at 2.4 kilometers and dive bombers and torpedo bomber circle range is 1.35 kilometers. As for tier 4 and 5, because there's no fighters at this tier, the sector range is 2.1 kilometers and the circle range is 1.20 kilometers. Yeah, they really baby that up so you can survive longer and by the way, the detection time by planes is reduced to 12 seconds instead of 22 seconds. So yeah, they really baby you up there. I know I have been rambling a lot about carriers, so what about the hybrids? It's exactly the same as mentioned a couple seconds above about their detection range. Now, for the ultimate question that everybody is really worried about, what about the Dutch cruisers? Did they really got we worked down to to make the worst ship line in the game? Well. It's just like how Wargaming keeps forgetting about them, adding discounts or anything to them. They did not touch the spotting mechanics as well, so... You can just launch your airstrikes and it will detect any ship within 4.5 kilometers. It's basically the best playing spotting ship in the game now. Anyways, if you managed to reach to the end of this video without jumping or reading the description, then congratulations, you have more IQ than the rest of the Shimakaze players going to carriers. I know that joke is running dry since 2016, so what do you think about the aircraft carrier rework? Personally, it's great, but as for the dive bombers with that auto lock on, not so much. I will wait this 7 out of 10, and once the dive bomber lock on is disabled when they're under smoke or consume it, then I will rate it as 10 out of 10. You still die to Indomitable as well as Midway or Exodus in the game, then follow up by getting isekai so you had to restart your app and then you can play it again. Well anyways that is enough for me today. I hope you enjoyed this technical commentary. Make sure you like and subscribe. Until then, Jane.